this is Cameron, and welcome to the practice log. Well, it's another, another morning session. Two in a row, I'm pretty sure. Oh well, that happens. But you know, we're, we're back now. Um, I'll do a night session next, you'll see that. Plenty to do in the morning though, plenty of Bach to work on. I didn't work on the sore yesterday. What am I doing talking while I'm standing? I should go to the chair. I forgot where I was for a moment, I guess. Yeah, hope you're having a good morning or day. I guess this is uh, noon for you if you're watching right as it comes out. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing pretty well. We got a lot of practicing to get into now. We're gonna mainly focus on the presto still. Lots of new fingerings with that one. I feel like a lot of the Bach that I'm playing, every time I look at it, I'm like changing the fingerings, even to these pieces that I've been playing for a few months. Which that's always the worst when you've been working on a piece and it just becomes kind of ingrained and then you're like, oh, I actually need to change this if I want it to be better. Fingering is like its own skill entirely. Learning how to finger something properly, it's kind of like giving yourself the best chance. It's like a dice roll, like whenever you play a passage, like depending on what the fingering is, it can be like a 50% chance that you survive it, or it can be like a 95% chance that you survive it. And the, the most optimal fingering will ideally be like as close to 100% as you can. And there are just certain places that were like 70%. There's a couple of 70% spots in the fugue. And the thing is, when you add those up, it gets pretty unlikely to survive it without any flubs. I kind of parallel it to, uh, I've been watching these videos, like AI machine learning videos on this game called, uh, uh what's the game called? It's like a race car game. It, it's actually like a, it's about like a Formula One car and people like make tracks for it. There's this guy who's a nerd. He like made an AI that like plays the game and he shows like the process of it being learned. His name is Yosh, Y-O-S-H, and the game is called Track Mania. That's what he makes the AIs for. So go look him up because it parallels to guitar practice quite Quite nicely. But there will be these really complicated turns, and he can like work out the probability of the car making it through each turn. The best he got was like 97%, but there's like 400 turns in the whole track, so it's very unlikely that the car will make it through. So he had to run it like a thousand times, and out of that, like one of them or whatever made it through. Formula One time. The Fugue is like this really complicated Formula One track, even though in real life they're not complicated. Imagine somebody built a really complicated Formula One track. It's all on like pipes and stuff, and it's really complicated, and it's really weird. That track represents the Fugue, and every passage of the Fugue is like a turn. You want to pretty reliably be able to make it through the whole thing. Because if you can't do that, how are you possibly going to express yourself if you're worrying about actually just surviving it. That's not good. But I feel like most of the fingerings I have in the fugue, they are like over 95% likely to work, but there are some places that are like 70, and I'm just like looking at those places now, and I'm just judging them. I'm like, why are these 70%? Is this passage really harder than another passage, or is it just all kind of the same difficulty? My fingerings just suck for this passage. Maybe that's what's going on. It's really easy to get lazy and stuff like that. I think we've all gone into that habit of just learning a piece any old way, in any old position, usually the open one, and then you just kind of, that's just how it is for you. But you know, maybe don't be lazy. And I'm saying that like I'm accusing you of being lazy. I'm speaking for myself right now, because I can be lazy too. Sometimes I just want to learn stuff and then just move on. But you know, you always have to come back to it. If you strive to be a high caliber player, you have to have fingerings that don't suck, and you got to figure those out. And that actually all goes into, I've been taking this time to answer comment questions, so let's take a look at the comment section. I was looking at my comment section this morning, and I I got a new one from me Q Bree. Good morning. How's it going? Thanks for your comment. You say, I'm amazed that you can remember 99.9% .9 of such long pieces. Well, actually, 99.9%, .9 that's like kind of offensive to me. You're saying that I can't remember the last 0.1%? How dare you? I'm just kidding. I mean, best case scenario, I probably play 99.9% .9 of the notes. I like to think I have 100% of them memorized. <laughs> I get what you're saying. I know professionals do it. They do do that. Sometimes professionals kind of wimp out though, and they'll have the music on the stage with them. That's a whole other story. Not that I plan on playing anything longer than three minutes in the next ten years, but still. Uh, you should learn Wonderwall. I think that's around three minutes. Did you always have an easier time remembering the score, or did you have to focus on learning it? Memory is something that you have to actually focus on. I could just as easily only look at the score for, like, the Bach that I'm about to play, and I would never, ever memorize it. It just wouldn't happen. Maybe I would memorize it, like, after a really long time, but it wouldn't be reliable 
memory. It would pretty much just be like muscle memory. I would be kind of like hallucinating the stimulus I get from looking at the score, because that's the only thing I practice is looking at the score and converting it into notes. So it wouldn't be the same as how I memorize stuff now. Yeah, you have to specifically practice memorizing, and that's kind of an annoying part about it. Like my favorite part about learning music is actually learning it, not knowing what it sounds like, and then playing it and actually getting to hear it. I mention that sometimes. Uh, I don't really listen to the <laughs> music that I'm playing. The Morel Sonatina, for example, I have never listened to that, and I get the luxury of listening it to the first time from me actually playing it. I did listen to the third movement, I knew what that sounded like, but at least the first and second movement, I had no idea what those were going to sound like. So I just have like no outside influence. And now later I've listened to how like David Russell plays it. He sounds a lot better than me. That's a cool thing to do. And same thing with the Bach as well. I never listened to any of the other movements other than the Fugue and the Presto. Mostly the Fugue. I, I like barely listen to the Presto. The Adagio, I never once listened to that. Siciliana, definitely never once listened to that. I've met a lot of people like that who are a lot better than me who also say that they never listen to the music they're working on. I feel like it's a pretty common thing. Anyways, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, so memory. Getting back to that. The way that I practice it, because like how I learn a new piece, like I just look at the music and I figure out the rhythms and I figure out fingerings for the notes to play them optimally. Sheet music with no fingerings is just kind of a vague series of instructions and then you interpret it to make it less vague and that's the process of learning it. And eventually like this passage that looks like individual notes, you kind of assign flows to them. Where like I'm not, I'm no longer reading individual notes. I'm looking at passages and they're reminding me of the passage and I'm seeing the sheet music. And that's kind of the first step to memory. Because that is in a sense memorizing the piece. Even though you can't play it without the music yet, it's still a form of memory because you're no longer sight reading. And then that is the stage that you will stay at unless you actually practice memorizing something. The way that you practice memorizing it, you try playing it away from the music. You kind of have to develop your own thought process because before you're looking at the music and that's your thought process, now you have to kind of go without it and figure out where's your mind going? Like, how are you visualizing stuff? Because I'll tell you this, I don't visualize using sheet music. Like, it sounds cool if you can do that, but I feel like that isn't helpful. Because sheet music is more of like a visual representation. You can get a lot more abstract in your mind. Like, because instead of like dots on a page in your mind, you can think of like structures and stuff and like up and down and like different like whatever and like shapes especially. This is crucial for memorizing stuff and this is something that like a lot of people will tell you to do and it really works parcel up the music into ideas for example the adagio of the BWV 1001 that I'm about to play it's in like 12 or 13 sections and each one is like an idea so the first idea would be this thing next idea. And even though it kind of sounded like I was going between ideas there, I'm just doing it off of the measures, and that's how third measure starts. It starts like this. So I consider that like part two now. We had our introduction 151. Yeah, so I consider that like the first part. Memorize each one like its own little piece of music. Most importantly, know how they all start. So I know the second one starts like this. And even if I have a memory slip around here, you know, whatever it is, I know the next one starts. You get the idea. So I know how they all start. So if I have a memory slip halfway through, I just jump right to the next section. You can definitely memorize a piece without doing that. And I've done that before. I tend to think of the piece as this gigantic like structure now. I cannot get up here without first climbing up it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so if I were to point to that top and it's like, play that, it's like, I have to climb up there first. What are you talking about? Like, how am I supposed to get up there from here? But when you do this, it's almost like you have like a bunch of little structures and it's like, play that one. Well, maybe I can't play it in the middle of that one, but I can definitely play the beginning of the next one, which is only right there. Pretty close, right? So if I have to skip 5% of the piece, who's going to miss it? So that's kind of my advice for memorizing stuff. Again, I didn't come up with that. Like, I've heard that said so much from so many people. It's a pretty solid way of doing it. And if you do that too, post in the comments. Let me know if you agree. You have a better way of memorizing stuff? I'd love to hear it because memorizing stuff is hard. If you want to talk about getting stuff performance ready, this is part of the process. And it'll give you a deeper understanding of the piece too. All right, well, I think we can end this talking portion because it's been a little while. Let's go ahead and get to practicing now, shall we? Did a lot of talking there. Hopefully I said something that did something for you. Okay, it's time for me to shut up and practice, for God's sake. So, I'll see you on the other side.
Okay, I think I'm ready to be done. I've put in some decent time, but I haven't had like that great of a time playing this time around. Uh, time, time, time. But it's been okay. I worked a lot on the fugue actually, and I found a wrong note in it, which is unfortunate, but we got that fixed up. Uh, it was only one wrong note, and the new one makes more sense now, because now it's just a regular diminished arpeggio with no passing tone in it or I was playing a diminished arpeggio with a passing tone, then a leap, the rest of it, which is kind of weird. I mean, they both sounded okay. Let me bring you closer. All right, well, just for the sake of practicing memory, I didn't work much on the adagio, like barely any. I'm gonna try playing through the entire adagio for you from memory. Ooh, let me pull you back a little. And we'll see how that goes, and if I have to stop it early, so be it. This is just a practice run. So we'll just get as far as we can. Okay, well that was the adagio from memory. I had a least favorite moment in there, and it was when I went to uh, this. I played like one beat of that measure, and then I went with the right rhythm. I hate that I did that. I should have just skipped. Yeah, this today's a little frustrated. It's kind of a weird day too, so it's okay. Tonight will be better.
hopefully. Let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. I think we've talked enough today. Hey, well, you know, if you made it this far, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, all that stuff. Hey, want some guitar lessons? I'll give you some guitar lessons. I'll uh, show you how to memorize music, perhaps. And you know, all the other stuff that comes with guitar lessons, too. Ah, oh, my face is itchy. Hey, got any comment questions like the one that I answered today? I'll answer your question and I'll probably add in my own stuff to the question, too. Because a lot of times I think about it and then it all just kind of comes out in the chair. And that's the process here. Alright, I'm gonna go start my day and do some stuff. Um, pay my, the rest of my taxes, I guess, because it's April 15th, I need to do that. Quarterly taxes, self-employed peeps out there, what's up? Alright, I'm gonna go do that. So, I'll see you tonight.